with government on the eve of the B7. My name is John Foster and I'm the Director of Policy and Comms here at the CBI. And I'd like to start by saying a big thank you to our principal sponsor and knowledge partner, Deloitte, for all of their support in making today happen. We've got a packed agenda for you all and what an agenda it is. Coming up later today, you're going to hear from the former Prime Minister, Gordon Brown, from the COP26 President, Alok Sharma, and from the Business Secretary, Kwasi Kwarteng. In a moment, I'll be handing over to the CBI's Director General, our very own, Tony Danka. But before I do, just a little bit of virtual housekeeping for you all. A number of today's sessions will include a Q&A format. For those of you that want to ask a question, please indicate your willingness to do so by simply raising your digital hand. When called to the floor, please state your name <coughs> and organization. Joining links will be sent 15 minutes before the start time for each session. And if you run into any technical difficulties whatsoever, our brilliant events team are on hand to help you. Final thought from me, colleagues, we are encouraging active participation today. So that means one thing, I really want to see all those video cameras on. Without further ado, I'm going to hand you over to the CBI Director General, Tony Danker. <coughs> well, thank you, John, and good morning, everyone. Welcome to the 2021 B7 CEO Summit. Every B7 is a moment for global business leaders across the world to meet at a pivotal moment in the political calendar, just ahead of the G7. Less than five weeks from now, with seven of the world's leading economies, the UK, Germany, France, Italy, Canada, Japan, and the US, coming together to build consensus. At the CBI, it's long been our privilege to join these annual summits, but this year we're delighted to be hosting alongside our strategic partner today, Deloitte. And over the next three days, uh, we'll be joined by our fellow business federations from across the G7 and senior cabinet ministers across government, chief economists, leaders from the IMF and the WTO, and more than 200 UK and global CEOs from every sector, energy, hospitality, tech, services, transport, education, and manufacturing. But this B7 is unlike most that have come before because this G7 will be important, more important than most that have come before. And then at the end of the year, COP26 in Glasgow becomes a key moment in the history of our planet. Right now, economies across the world are in crisis. COVID-19 continues to devastate lives while millions have been vaccinated. Other countries fight day by day to tackle the virus. Even now in India, our thoughts and solidarity are with those facing ongoing outbreaks. We are learning that success in one part of the world is futile without common efforts everywhere. This crisis demands an entirely new level of international partnership to deploy medicines, treatments, vaccines, and expertise where they're needed most. And as businesses, we stand ready to serve helping in any way we can with ongoing relief efforts. At the CBI, we've been coordinating with UK firms to secure critical resources and supplies, from oxygen cylinders and ventilators to PPE, antiviral drugs, and testing. Because I firmly believe that business has a vital role to play, not only as an advocate of international cooperation, but as an agent for progress. And looking to the year ahead, COVID has forced us to rip up the old economic rule book with the hit to the global economy three times more severe than the 2008 financial crisis. And as we began to shift from crisis to recovery, business now has a once in a generation opportunity to shape our economic response to this pandemic. For the past year, businesses have been in crisis mode, thankful for government support, a real financial lifeline. But now there is an imperative for growth and a real belief in building a better decade ahead. With 2021, therefore, as pivotal a year as any we can remember. 
I believe we as international business leaders have both an obligation and an opportunity to forge this. We're at a real turning point. For the past 40 years or more, globalization has shaped the way we work internationally. We've seen the movement of people, goods, and ideas across borders like never before in history. And even in times of crisis, after 2008, we saw a remarkable level of international coordination. But in recent years, that's changed. Brexit was the biggest shakeup in British politics for a generation. The rise of China has shifted geopolitical fault lines. And lately, protectionism has taken hold with data showing that in 2017, more than 50% of exports from G20 countries were subject to restrictive trade measures. Everything from import tariffs to export bans, up 30% in 12 years. Together, I worry these shifts mark a retreat from internationalism at the very moment we need it most. I am really hopeful that next month in Cornwall, Global political leaders will leave protectionism at the door and find a renewed commitment to joint endeavor. The challenges we face, COVID, recovery, climate change, need leaders to lean in, not stand off, to collaborate around common goals and to make real commitments to work in concert. And I really believe that we as business can role model that spirit and that action. So this week, it's up to us as businesses to do just that and that begins today, inviting leading business organizations and CBI members from around the world to shape our global recovery agenda and to show how we can solve problems quickly across borders in a way that states can't or won't. The vaccine rollout is the ultimate example. It has showed the real potential for business to find solutions even where trade barriers exist. And companies we all know, Pfizer, AstraZeneca, and others, have worked with governments and universities to make those solutions a reality. With governments and scientists sharing data and research findings freely around the world. True collaboration between all parts of society and a global supply chain where it matters most, helping tackle one of the biggest crises we've ever faced. So what can this summit achieve? What's on the agenda? Well, it's our hope that over the next few days, we can do four big things. First, strengthen our international resilience to global health emergencies, looking at what the barriers and major risks might be. And not only where government can help, but how, as firms, we can step up and lead. Second is promoting global trade after a year of supply chain disruption and rising protectionism, particularly looking at ways to revitalize the World Trade Organization, the WTO, to help establish ambitious norms and standards, and thereby help business power our global recovery. So it's great to have the new WTO Director General with us tomorrow. And as businesses, we should be as vocal as possible in championing the benefits of free and fair trade, not only for our economy, but for our society too. Third, we want to look at making trade more digital. Today, of course, even simple things like sending an email or booking a hotel abroad now rely on the flow of data across borders. And we've seen the importance of digital trade more than ever during the COVID crisis. When sharing research findings like genome data between countries has helped millions of people get vaccinated at record speed. Digital opportunities enabled by data flows at the heart of a global recovery. Fourth and finally, we want to spark a race to the top on net zero. We know the climate crisis won't be solved by any one nation alone. And we need to see a seismic shift with G7 countries coming together, securing commitments and discussing ideas. Like an emerging market for carbon capture technology in high emitting countries, once a radical idea, now it's vital for our future and part of our path to the COP26 climate summit in Glasgow later this year. The truth about net zero is that without business action, it will remain elusive. It will be businesses that innovate new energy solutions, new green industries and clusters. And it will be businesses who work out how to transition all parts of our economy and society to a decarbonized world. If our seven countries, if our seven business communities don't lead that endeavor, then who will? 
seven countries, seven economies, aligning on how the world build back better. But let's not wait for the others to move. This only works if as nations and economies, we each take big leaps in parallel. In the UK, we need to seize the moment. We need business to transform the economy and realize a better decade. And at the CBI, we want to play our part. So later this month, we will publish a major study looking at where and how the UK can begin to build back from this pandemic and the big trends that will shape our economy ahead. We've done some real number crunching, looking at trade, for example, where we know so many brilliant UK firms have the potential to export. Their products and services are the best of the best. But still, eight in 10 UK firms have never traded internationally. And over the next decade, that opportunity, a new generation of SME exporters could boost UK exports by 20 billion pounds in 2030. And on decarbonization, we can really pioneer en energy markets, develop renewable technologies, invent new green products and services, not only in service of society, but in service of economic growth too. And not only for Britain, but for the whole world. These are the kind of prizes that every country can be reaching for to power our global recovery. A race to the top, a competition to the top, and collaboration to ensure that this leads to shared prosperity for all countries and shared prosperity within countries. Above all, this year must be a moment we look back on and say we did everything we could to rebuild from the crisis. Today's CEO Summit is the perfect launch pad. UK and global business coming together, discussing solutions directly feeding into the B7 Summit over the next two days. With our conversations and our resulting communiques, step one. On Wednesday, we will hand over the baton to the Prime Minister to present to the G7 a business community ready, willing and able to make 2021 a turning point for the world economy. This week, this summer, this year. It's starting right now. Thank you. So now I'm delighted to introduce our next speaker, Sharon Thorne. Sharon is the chair of the Deloitte Global Board of Directors. Uh, she has more than 30 years experience working with some of the best businesses out there. And perhaps most importantly, six of those were on the CBI board. So she knows how businesses and governments can find common ground. And I know that she and the whole team at Deloitte have shown real international leadership from their COVID response to their climate commitments. Uh, so over to you, Sharon. Uh, welcome to the B7 CEO Conference. <laughs> 